Hello and welcome to That Girl Magic, the podcast where we explore the transformative power of wellness, self-improvement, and magic. I'm your host, Karina Franco, and I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of discovery with you. Hi, welcome to another episode. I'm so happy that you're here. Today, I want to talk about something that is quite dear to my heart, and It's going to be a slightly difficult topic for some, so I want to come on here and let you know that I fully understand if this becomes hard at some point and you wish to pause. Today, we are talking about inner child and inner child healing. So what is our inner child? Personally, for me, some people have their own different ways of seeing it. My inner child is my child self within my adult self. The way that I see it is my inner child is myself until the point that I stopped being a child. When we become adults, we let go of certain things that makes us our childlike self. Because some people may call it childish when you do it. Because of this society that we live in, we find ourselves in a situation where if you do certain things, it will be childish or childlike, and you either be seen neutral or badly most of the time. And also, we live in a society where children almost don't seem allowed to be children. What I mean by that is in a world filled with and racial issues and societal issues, money problems, gun violence, um, people attacking each other, countries attacking each other. Society in itself is in a way, in a point where for you to keep your childlike innocence is very difficult. And what ends up happening, even if you didn't have a bad life, even if you didn't have a difficult life, you will find yourself in a situation where it's extremely difficult for you to fully be a child and for your innocence to be kept. No matter how hard parents try, and I must say a lot of parents are having a very tough job nowadays. It's really difficult for you to keep your child's mind innocent long enough. And I'm not saying innocent as in like naive. I'm talking about your child at a certain age shouldn't have to know that their backpack can be a double for their protection against a gun. A child at five, six, seven, eight years of age shouldn't know what a gun is. It shouldn't know how much harm it causes. We shouldn't live in a world where people still degrade each other on how they look. And unfortunately, we are still in those times. Unfortunately, we still see things around us that makes us question where certain people's minds are. It is sad for me as an adult to be besides a child where the mother is facing the other direction and it can't see this one man looking up and down at the child wondering what they have in between their legs. You shouldn't have to worry when your child goes into a bathroom stall if someone is there waiting for them to do harm to them. You shouldn't have to worry if your child is outside, if they're going to be stolen away. And you shouldn't have to keep your TVs off or be careful what they're doing on their phones if they have one because you are afraid of what people put in the internet and what shows up on TV. When you have that moment in your life, Where you go from being a child to being an adult, there's this shift that happens. Some people's shift are very positive, but some others, like myself, 
is not a particularly good cut. So then we dove into trauma. There's all kinds of trauma. I'm not going to go deep into this for all kinds of reasons. But let me tell you this. Trauma can live in your body in different ways. It can be an emotional trauma. It can be a physical reaction. It can be a mental reaction. It can be almost like a PTSD-like way. It can be this visceral reaction or this intuition that you don't feel good. Everyone has their own way of having this almost like trigger-like reaction to something that hurts them now, that was caused when they were a child. So how do you heal it? Different ways. Everyone has their own way of connecting with their own inner child. So how can you go about it? Your inner child, one of the ways that you can go about healing it is literally connecting with it. Closing your eyes and envisioning your younger self in front of you and trying to ask it what it wants, what it needs, what it wishes that you could do to make it feel better. Do you need more safety? Do you need care? Do you need me to be more playful? Do you need me to go out into nature and dirty my toes? Do you need me to jump into puddles of mud? Do you need me to go back into the town that you lived in? and reconnect with the people there? Do you need to close a chapter with a family member that has hurt you in the past? Do you need to go into therapy? Do you need medical help? And by doing those questions over periods of time, you will start to heal your inner child. You will start to connect more with it. And you will see almost like a playfulness and this childlike energy come out of you. So here's ways that you can see that inner child self come out. So how can the inner child come out? A couple of ways. So the inner child came out, can come out literally like a child. So you may find yourself needing to go into nature and having a nature walk and playing in the mud jumping in the fields, collecting flowers. You may find yourself wanting to dance and play. You may find yourself that you want to go back into reading books and maybe you didn't read since you were a child. Maybe you love to play video games or maybe you're someone that it really comes out in the way that you communicate with people or the way that you are the life of the party. And I don't mean in this toxic way. I mean, these little flares, the, these little enhancements that come out when you let it out. For me, for example, the way that I really connect with my inner child is actually through singing and dancing. I loved to sing and dance when I was a little child. There's videos of me dancing and singing and, and watching the TV and playing the karaoke. And when I turned into an adult, I stopped doing it. I stopped having this thing of just from time to time um, of singing because I felt like it and dancing because I felt like it. And I shut it down because I was so hurt in that context that that's what I shut down. So nowadays, from time to time, I go ahead and I put some music and I sing to it or I mouth the words to it and I dance to it and I just let my body move. And that really brings out this inner child uh, used to just sit in front of the TV and when a musical ad would pop off, like I would just dance to it and create a choreograph. And that enhances your connection to your inner child. And the cool thing about it is the more you enhance it, the better it will feel and the more you will heal as well because you will start to understand what it needs. And of course, healing your inner child has no parts that are fully good or fully bad. It's normally kind of a scale of it. My inner child healing was definitely not an easy one. Mine was very much related to people's opinions and also to the divorce of my parents. My 
parents divorced, I was around 10 years old. I had a little sister that had been born not even two years before. And my father divorced my mother because he had found someone else and he was actively cheating on my mother. They broke off and I lost my father as he was. My father was someone that was very playful, someone that cared for me, someone that took me out and made me feel like I was daddy's little girl. After they broke off, his relationship with me took a turn. He started to be more absent. He didn't went out with me. Every time we went, I felt like he had to bring his new wife along. I didn't like her because to me, she was the symbol of the person that separated my parents. I didn't feel comfortable. I felt uncomfortable. And I immediately started to lose my childlike essence very quickly. I started to be more mean, more logical. I didn't want to connect with people. I didn't allow myself to cry. Um, I didn't want it to hang out with my father. I lied multiple times to my mother saying that I was sick when I wasn't just to prevent my father from taking me. I didn't want him to take my sister either. I was extremely protective. And I created the separation because it really hurt. And it hurt because my father, the exact opposite of who he was. And to this day, I still feel like I need to heal parts of it because I still talk with him from time to time because he sometimes normally calls me. And when I went through 2020, 2021, and 2022, I had this moment where I was like, I want to try to reconnect with my father. I want to try to create this relationship with him again. So I tried to call, I tried to invite him to things. I tried to create a relationship with him again. I would call, he wouldn't pick up, he wouldn't call back. When he would pick up, the calls were short and bittersweet and it didn't felt connective. I wanted to tell him about my troubles, my problems, my my inner thoughts and try to create a connection deeper than just, hi, how are you? And he didn't let me, he didn't let me in. And to this day, I don't understand the reasons for it. It's like, it's almost like the moment that he created a separation from my mother, he created a separation from me and my sister. He created this boundary of you cannot come in. And to this day, I don't understand it. And I reached a point where I feel tired of understanding it or trying to understand it. Our last conversation was a while before Father's Day. I would say about almost a month before Father's Day, about three weeks before. I did not call him on Father's Day. It's the complete opposite. He posted a video of me celebrating my grandfather as my father. Um, and I never blocked my father anywhere. I never blocked his phone number. I never blocked my social media to him. I never eliminated him. So he saw it. When my father started to disconnect with my sister as well, that was to me a bit of a nail in the coffin. He stopped calling. He didn't even call her on a birthday. That to me was the end of it. Um... And then at the same time, besides healing that part or trying to heal that part, that was this disassociation with the imagery of my father, with the masculine energy. Um, it also, at the same time, I started to understand a bit of my disconnection from my own body and my likes and dislikes. What I mean by that is, 
due to that trigger of my father created other triggers associated with other things. I was a people pleaser. I always did things for the benefit of others and barely for the benefit of myself. My family would buy me things and if I didn't like it, I wouldn't tell them. I would just hide the thing and not tell them anything about it. And then if they asked me for it, I would wear it just to pretend that I liked it. And it also went into my likes and dislikes. I liked reading fantasy books and books that weren't anything that added to me being better I just read it for pleasure and due to school and due to having to be forced to read books that I didn't like that I didn't enjoy and then on top of that being told that the books that I liked were awful I stopped reading for a very long period of my life I rediscovered reading during the time that I was healing my inner child and she was telling me like Go back and read the books that you enjoyed and find the joy again. And from that point on, like to this day, my sister plays around with me on it of the fact that I eat books. (laughs) I devour a book in no time and I read it and I enjoy myself very, very much during it. And then also it was so dancing and the singing. I liked to do it just because I liked it. I didn't care if I was bad at it. But then when I went into dance classes and I started to get into shows and competitions, there was the sense of like, if I'm not good enough, what am I doing here? There was the sense of like competition with myself of needing to be better for just. I couldn't just enjoy dancing for just dancing. I had to be good at dancing. So that created almost like this rotten relationship with the act of dancing where unless I danced and looked good at it, I shouldn't be dancing. I shouldn't just dance for dancing. And that created so every single time that I was in a public setting and people were dancing, I had to show or showcase my abilities. So I didn't just dance because it felt good that movement to do I had to plan this choreograph in my head to the beat of the song and if it didn't look good I wasn't good enough I created all these stories in my head which all came trickling down from the fact that I lost fatherly love I didn't had a male figure in my life that I could lean on for a long period of time Even though I had my grandfather, which I'm very blessed to have, uh, as he is probably one of the best people in my life and one of the best male figures of my life, he was not present enough at the time. And what I mean by that is that it's not because I didn't saw my grandfather. It's like my grandfather is a very stoic person. He's a very um, matter of fact man. He was not this like connective during let's go have fun type of man. He's very, you know, cool, calm, which is great when you're under pressure. He's the person that I go to when I'm stressed out and I need just someone to help me think it through logically. But when I'm emotionally hurting and I need support emotion, he's not the person that I go to. And that's the lack that I felt. And then when I went into relationships, I was trying to modulate the relationships around me to my own. So what I created was unfortunately this feeling that I had to almost mother my partner. So I had to, basically what I did was I emulated what my grandmother did, what my mother did, which they learned from their own mothers, which is when you are with someone, you take care of them. And the take care of them is a typical womanly, societal womanly taking care. He needs a medical consultation, you mark it for them. They need to go somewhere, you remind them of it. You become the assistant, the mother, the wife, the nurse, the you create this persona of yourself 
where he just needs to focus on himself and you focus on both of you. And I came to realize that there's a lot of toxicity that can come from that. Because if it's become if it becomes unbalanced, it goes into that. And that hurt my inner child because I was trying to recreate what I felt like I lost with my own relationships. And that hurt me. I was trying to relive the past. I was trying to recreate the past. And that just ended up hurting me. That ended up hurting my inner child. So now, I, through this process, I am still healing. I don't think anyone ever gets 100% healed. There's always something that you can uncover. Is it better? Yes. Is it perfect? Of course not. There's still triggers that come up. There's still things that come up. If you go down this path, you will have many, many triggers, some smaller, some bigger, some harsher, some more difficult to deal with, some easier to deal with. And some can be healed in multiple modalities. You could meditate and talk to your inner child. You could go into the habits they used to do as a child and relive them. If you moved cities maybe you go back to your old city even if it's for for like a day or two and you go back to the places that you used to be and just be in it and analyze it i went back to all of the schools that i've been i told them hey i just want to walk around through the halls and i did it during summertime where the kids are not around and i just walked through the halls and i just looked at the doors and i remembered uh, the classes I had and talks I had and moments I had, I went back to places that I used to play at and I just tried to re- to remember all those moments and to rewrite the story in my head of the things that they told me and how I should. I envision what I wish I had said. And by doing that, I started to create what I want now. I don't want to be pushed down and and dragged through the mud by someone. Um, I don't want to please someone for the sake of them feeling better. I don't want to lie and say that I like something when I don't. I don't want people to break my boundaries and leave me hanging in the situation. So now, I feel better. I've created boundaries that I don't want people to cross. I'm going to be honest when I don't like something. Maybe I don't say it to their faces. I wait until the tides go down and then I approach them calmly and I tell them, hey, I really didn't like what you gave me as a gift. It doesn't really match with my own personal taste. Is there something we can do about this and try to reconnect so that you can understand what I like? And this is coming from someone that I have an aunt that is an horrible gift-giving person. She buys things that she likes and then she gives to others. And she assumes that others will like it because she does. Only recently, she started to be able to understand my tastes and give a gift that is closer to what I enjoy. But I will say the best gift gifting person has to be my sister. She absolutely puts the nail in the coffin and she always gets me something that I will absolutely love. And it's never something that I'm expecting, <laughs> which is the funny part. And also, believe it or not, But when you're doing this inner child healing and you have a sibling, especially with such a big gap as me and my sister do about seven years apart, seven, eight years apart, you have this moment where you almost want to heal yourself because you also want your sibling to be good with themselves. To the point that if you see us talking to each other you will laugh because I I have a completely different aesthetic personality and way of being of my sister but we somehow have the most fun 
most lighthearted, most deep as well connection that you could see two siblings have. Um, as she said, and I quote, I am your therapist and I didn't ask for it. <laughs> so here's my final tidbit. Love yourself and connect with your inner child. Connect with the childlike essence that you have. All of us have. Because when you have this inkling when it's raining and you feel like just going out and dancing in the rain, that's most likely your inner child telling you to go and do it. So do it. Enjoy those little moments where you dance when the food is good. When you go out into the rain and dance. When you step into the puddle because you feel like it. When you draw a bubble bath and put toys in it. It's not you being childish. It's you being childlike. So appreciate your inner child. And tell that she's fine. And she can come out. And believe me, the moment that you let it come out, you will feel a massive shift. Don't forget to follow That Girl Magic to stay updated on new episodes. Let's unleash our inner magic and create the life of our dreams. I'll see you in the next episode.